Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? We are right. Is this mean all? Technology, don't like it. Force quit. Let's try this again. Infinite geometry. Yes, I want to quit and then start it again. Uh, some of you are already looking at this. That's fine. All right, so uh, this is just chapters one through three on this, and then we'll tomorrow, which I will not be here. Now, I will be here on Monday, so that's why I have uh, a third day of review because I knew I had this IP meeting thing I had to go to. So on Monday, I'll just do a, hey, don't lose this. You'll have th this one I'm handing you today. Mr. Brubaker give you – no, wait. I will be here tomorrow. It's 11 o'clock is my IP. Yeah, ignore what I just said. Um, it's for my afternoon classes. I won't be here. Uh, then we'll go over um, um, the uh, question or uh, chapters four through seven tomorrow, and then we'll put those two together. And we'll have Monday the entire class period to look over both of them uh, and to ask any final questions. So Monday is like we got a lot of extra time on Monday to go over things. All right, let me share this, and we'll get going here. Well, why do you think I just gave you that long speech? Because that's what I thought when I drew those three shapes up there. And by the way, every single person today gave me the right answers. So my ability to trust you when I give you easy ones, when you say, oh, these are easy, I don't know. My, my confidence in you has been thoroughly shaken from the results of uh, yesterday's test. All right, so here we go. Uh, Paris, do you know what to do here? This question one, you can look on your paper as well, too. Uh, by the way, this is the segment edition posture. Yes, what's the answer? Well, how would you find it? I'm going to give you a segment. It's going to be made up of all, uh, more than one segment, and it's going to have some values, and one of them is, one of them is going to be missing. You've got to find the missing value. How do you do it? I, there's two ways of thinking about it. Give me either one. Well, how did you figure out his four? Just a lucky guess? What did you do? I can think of it as two ways. Which one did you think of? She did subtraction. She said 15 minus 11 is four and you're done. The other way would be what plus 11 is 15. Hey, I, I can't make this any harder. That's it. Can you do this? All right, all right, moving on. So this is uh, questions one through, how many did I give you? Okay, so the numbers can get larger. There can be some decimals, but I'm saying conceptually wise, it's, a, it's the segment addition postulate. Always. All right. So if that was the segment addition postulate, this is the angle addition postulate. Okay. This one's a bit more challenging. Why? I'm giving you variables. You do it the same way you did the previous one. Now, a lot of times using your pencil to do this so you don't screw this up is a good thing. Danny, what's the first angle I'm looking at in question number five? Uh, no, what's the name of the first angle? So here's my suggestion. Some of you still struggle with this to identify where is FGN. Take your pencil and lightly go FGN. F G N. And Danny said it's 21 degrees, so you label it 21 degrees. Okay? Bailey, read the next one. What's the next angle? We just did the first angle. What's the second angle up there? So I take my pencil and I go N, 
G8, just so I can say, okay, I'm dealing with this one right here. And we're told that it's what? 23X minus three. The last angle less is um, watch FGH is the whole darn thing. What the segment or what the angle addition postulate say? Basically, in your own words, uh, this angle plus this angle would be equal to the whole angle. Well, the whole angle is FGH. FGH is what? 25x plus 6, and that has to equal the other two angles added together. That means this angle, 23x minus 3 plus 21. Can you set that up all by yourself? Danny, thumbs up, thumbs down? Could you set that up by yourself? Okay. Danny, big picture. This is what it's going to be. I'm going to give you an angle that's going to be broken up. I'm going to tell you how much the whole thing is. I'm going to tell you what each individual pieces part is. They're just going to have variables in them. The whole thing, it's just like the previous one, the segment addition posture. The whole thing is equal to this plus this. This is the whole thing. There's your first angle. There's your second angle. You do have to solve this, though, for x. Okay. Worse. Guess what it's asking you? It's not asking you what x is. It's asking you what a specific angle is. So I got to find NGH. NGH is N. G is this one right here? So steps are: I got to solve for x and then plug it into x. Now here's what that whole 15-minute speech was about. This is where you stop. And you're like, Mr. C, you're making no sense. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm lost. Help me. I'm not going to claim you can't make a mistake with that much algebra. You can, but you just simply say, I know what I'm doing, or I don't know what I'm doing. Okay? You're like, well, I know I'm going to make a mistake, so that's my problem. Okay, well, that's a different problem. But you're like, I can set that up. I know what to do. By the way, it tells you what the answers are already. One of these is the answer. Let's see if we can solve this one. Uh, Negative 3 and 21 gives me negative, gives me what? Negative 3 and 21? I just turn the numbers around. That's why I'm so confused. Gives me a, gives me an 18, positive 18. Subtract 23x from both sides. I get 2x plus 6 equals 18. Therefore, 2x equals, and therefore, x equals. Now, you feel like you did a whole lot of work, but then you're not to the answer. So you go back to what they're asking. They're asking you to find NGH, which was this. I know that x is 6. Uh, ugly numbers, right? Uh, 23 times 6 is what? 18 to 1, 133, 138, sorry. Minus 3 would be? You said x was 6, right? Yeah. You know that NGH is 23. Oh, okay. Okay. So I, I can't account for silly math mistakes. What I can account for is do I know what I'm doing here? Do you know what you're doing? I gave you how many of these? Four or five to do? There's plenty of practice. Three of them? I gave you practice. Hey, if this is your thing that kicks your butt, do it 10 times. My claim is after the fourth time, you're like, well, I'm not doing it 10 times. You'll know what to do. Okay? If your problem is the algebra, well, this isn't an algebra class. It's a geometry class. Meaning, like, I can't help you when you make silly mistakes. I can help you with setting up the problem. But if you make silly math, you one times two, and you put three, then, you know, that's a di completely different problem. All right. Any questions on that category? All right. Moving on. And remember, I mean, no one has stopped me at this point. So my only assumption as a teacher right now is that you, you understand what to do. If that's not true, you have to be brave and talk. Okay. Uh, most of you, hopefully, you're going to see that, at least today, this is just easy stuff. 
we got to find the measure of angle B. Uh, well, there's a number next to it, 62, and there's a red thing right there. The red thing means the key to this one is noticing that this line right here, it is a line, and that B is on that line. And that how many degrees are in a straight line? From here all the way to here is 180 degrees, and you got a 90, and you got a 62, so what's left? We know there's 180 degrees in a line. Well, there's 62 of them, and there's 90 of them. Some people could do this in their head. 90 and 62 is? 90 and 62 is? Oh, 90. 90 and 62 is? Some people can do it. Others of them would need scratch work to do that. Hey, look at the answers. It's 180 minus 152. Even if this is where you stopped, could it be 152? 180 minus 100? No way. Could it be 62? What's 62 and 152? Not 180. Not 180. We're, we're in the 200s. Well, if it's not 62, it's not. I didn't need to do the math to find the answer. I did have to add 90 and 62, though. 52. So. No, so it was 62. Got to be 28. That's the one of the cool things about multiple choice tests is that uh, it can, on, on occasion, save you time. Anyone lost in how I got that answer? All right. Uh, we'll briefly talk about this. Uh, Connor, how are we going to calculate this? Uh, number number nine. You need, don't need to tell me the answer. Just tell me how you're going to calculate it. What do you notice about the picture? And two angles make up that 90. So how are you going to find that the one that's missing? You hear what he said? I'm going to subtract it from it. So Karis, look at the four answers. Which ones immediately could it not be? Give me you know, A, B, C, D. Which ones could it not be? See what I mean? It's either going to be A or B. Now, notice those are only two off, so you need to do the math on that. 90 minus 46 is 44, okay? All right. Uh, what do you notice about these two angles right here? What do they make? Therefore, what's the setup? If they make a line, what's the setup? From, so look at the answers again. Karis, which ones could it not be? See how much easier that was? So it's either going to be A or D, right? Uh, hopefully you can just see from the number that's got to be A, right? 104 plus 76 is 180. Uh, here's just another version of that same thing. It makes a straight line, subtract that from 180. Can't be A. All right, enough of that one. Moving on to the next category. What do you notice about those two angles? What are they called? Vertical angles are? Danny, number 14, what's the answer? Boom. So, you know, chapter two, you might have missed this one. Chapter seven, you don't miss vertical angles, right? Vertical angles. Oh, what are those? Parallel. Two parallel lines cut by transversal. What do you know about same side interior angles? They are supplementary. Now, we can't have uh, Matt, the one answering everything. You need to stop me if this doesn't make sense. Same side interior angles. If you forget, you got your book of truth in front of you. Okay, this was way back chapter three or four. Same side interior angles are supplementary. Find out what added to 66 is 180, you're done. Uh, what do you know about these two angles, Bailey? Do you remember the names? What do you know about corresponding angles? You kind of got really quiet there. 
you actually did the hardest part, which is tell me they're corresponding. They're not alternate interior, not same side interior. Corresponding angles are? Therefore, what's the answer? Done. Corresponding. What are these? What do we know about alternate interior angles? Therefore, they are. Therefore, the answer is. All right. Uh, here is the first. Well, it's not hard, but this is the first one we haven't done in a while. Everyone look at the board. Do you remember what we call these angles? Exterior angle is the 120, and the 80 and the question mark are called the remote interior angles. What do you know about an exterior angle and the two remote interior angles? They are, they are equal to each other. Like, what do you mean they're equal? I mean that 120 is equal to whatever that is, D, angle D, plus angle C. Heck, you can do that one in your head. Therefore, the answer is? The answer is A. Who said B? Okay, you got to tell me, are you going to remember that? That the external angle is equal to the sum of the two remote. I can ask this question two ways. I can either ask you how big is a remote, or I could, I can ask you how much is a remote, or I could ask you, or the exterior. Here's one of the exterior. So how big is the exterior? So when I give you a question like this on a test and you miss it, shame on you. If you're not paying attention right now, you're not, you know, if you need to write this down, shame on you. This is like Christmas presents right here. Hey, Mr. C, give me 20 of these. I won't miss any of those, right? And you got a calculator too, double Christmas presents, right? If you need to use a calculator to do 70 plus 30. All right, now we come or we end on the ugly ones. All right, let's write this down or find it in your notes, highlight it, you gotta remember this. I'm gonna give you a polygon and I'm gonna ask you about INT and EXT, what does that mean? Some of you have this memorized, you don't even need to look through your notes. Others of you are like, wait, what? Interior, exterior? The sum of all interior angles of any polygon, what's the formula? Some people just this, they remember this. I'm the same way. I don't know why it sticks with me. It just kind of magically sticks with me. Others of you are like, oh, I don't even remember doing that. That's the formula. N means what? Number of, number of sides. So how many sides? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to do seven minus two is five, whatever five times 180 is, is your answer. Okay, so there's your formula for interior angles of all of them. What if we wanted to find one of them? So the formula is you take the answer, to whatever 180 times n minus 2 is, and you divide it by n. If you miss this question, hopefully it's because you didn't read it carefully. Because it is two, well, they're not really different formulas, essentially. It's the same formula, it's one you're dividing by n, one you're not. One is the sum, one is one of them. Read it carefully. Is it asking me for the sum or asking me for one of them? It's asking me the sum, so it's this one. Okay. Exterior angles, easiest one, if you remember, what's the sum of all exterior angles of any polygon? For some reason, it sticks with people, but not everyone. Or he's on the page. How much is one exterior angle? Should be in your notes. Those are the two formulas to do. I don't know how many questions I gave you, 27 through something, right? 27 through? 30. 27 through 30. I'm either going to ask you interior angle or exterior angle. I'm either going to ask you the sum or I'm going to ask you what one of them is. N represents the number of sides. Danny, you on this or are you drawing again? 
Cool. Good job. Was that it? Was that every question on the practice test? Okay. I am not lying when I say this is, I mean, I could literally right now pull up the final exam and show you, and it would match question for question. Uh, this one has, Micah. I will, the only difference between the, uh, the actual final, what, you're, what you have in front of your face right now is, I'm probably not going to do 30 of them. I'll look up here in a second uh, how many questions are on the actual final. Hey, tomorrow, Mr. No, never mind. I was about to say Mr. Brubaker again. Uh, tomorrow we'll do the same thing for chapters four through seven. On Monday is our last chance, right? If you wanted to, well, if you wanted to, we could do a mini practice test, right? If you don't want to do that, you're like, I would rather just take what I gave you today, what I give you tomorrow, and just study that or ask questions. We could do that as well, too. I truly don't have anything designed for Monday other than ask me questions. I'm still having problems on interior exterior angles. Can we run through, you know, 15 problems together? We can do that. I can make it individual for every single person here. On Monday, I will ask every individual person, hey, what do you need help on? What do you need help on? We've got plenty of time. We've got the whole class period. You may use this. You're listening. You may use Monday's class period to study what you think is important for you. Hey, you got a semester final on Monday, don't you? Yes? No. Okay, so we don't have any semester final on Monday. On Monday, if you're like, I got to I gotta start hitting the history stuff right now. As long as you're studying something on Monday, I don't care. It can be math, right? It can be anything. But we're going to use the time to get ready for semester finals on Monday. Um, so summarize, you got half of it today. I'll give you half of it tomorrow. And on Monday, it is your choice what you study, but you will study. Okay? Like I said, I'll ask each, and in, each individual person on Monday, like, hey, you're okay on the math? You want help on something? I'll spend as much time as you need on Monday. If you, no one needs help, then... I'll just sit there and I don't know what I'll do, but I'll figure something out. Um, no, I don't play Minecraft. What? I have it on my PlayStation, but I've never played it. Uh, if you're going to play Minecraft, I want to do it. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll sit there and cry because I still don't have a PlayStation 5. Yeah. <laughs> and then watch a video of somebody eating on their PlayStation. No, what I have been doing is I've been going on eBay and seeing uh, how much they're going for. So until they get down to about the $800 mark, you see that meme where they sold a piece of paper? I, I might be, unfortunately. I hope not. I hope by at least spring break I have a PlayStation. But no. I'm hoping. But. Why one dollar? This guy. Did you see the guy put his his in the shredder? No. Um, so, I didn't see last thing's people do. Why did you put it in the shredder? To tick people like me off? I just showed you. Yeah. What is your most hyped game on PS5 right now? Most hyped game? Yeah. Like, what are you, what are you most I, will, I, will, I, I have not played Assassin's Creed yet. And, and I mean, I know I have to play it right on PlayStation 4, but I'm holding out for that. Um, well, I, I've been a Ratchet and Clank fan for a long time, so I want to play that. And. Um, uh, and I still haven't played uh, Last of Us Part Two no, because. Is that the one where everyone right. actually had such a tragic backstory? Oh, they all have tragedy. That's what makes good fiction. No, I know. Right? Last of Us Two was a. I don't want to spoil anything, but don't.